Hi guys, how you doing? Well, ever since I started um, doing political blogs, I've been always worried about it being taken down by YouTube. Um, and uh, with each video I made, each blog I made, it always stayed up. But there's a first for everything, and I've just experienced my for the first time a video of mine being taken down. And it was a video that I called If Someone Wants to Believe a Lie, There's Nothing You Can Do About It. And it was, um, I made this video sort of in response to, <coughs> not to that, but to, um, a video that I saw existed that denies the moon landing, which, you know, is part of the whole lie uh, environment or group of lies about Jews, the Holocaust, um, conservatives, Republicans, and Israelis, and I think what I did was when I started talking about all these lies that are being spoken of about all these groups, like I told you, I'm a student of sociology. So, groups are important to me as I study the behavior of the group. And there happens to be a group of people who believe lies about other groups. And uh, there's a thing of freedom of speech, which um, we have, and uh, uh, and I've often said that with this freedom of speech, you have every right to express your whatever you want to say. And uh, even if it's a lie that and a wise person once said to me that if someone wants to believe a lie there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you have control of is yourself. That's why um, President Trump had no control over who endorses him. And if white supremacists want to endorse him, there's nothing he can do about it. Just like, you know, if you like my videos, fine. If you don't like them, that's okay too. You know, and you have the freedom to like what you want to like. To enjoy what you want to enjoy. And to believe whatever you want to believe. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you have your right to your opinion. And even if I disagree with you, I will fight to the death your right to your, your belief. That even if I disagree with you, 
I still respect you and I still respect your point of view even if I disagree with it now opinions are opinions facts are facts and there are some people like Max White who believed that opinions were facts and if I disagreed with her she would say well you're wrong and if she wanted to believe a lie about me if she wanted to believe a lie that I didn't really use the lawn uh, washer and dryer and that I pocketed the coins because it goes back to that time um, um, because after I did the laundry and I discovered that there was no good dryer down there all the dryers were not drying the clothes sorry about that and um, and I would tell her that and she wouldn't believe me and she was convinced that I that I didn't put the clothes in the dryer and I pocketed the change and I kept telling her the dryers down there don't work right they don't work right they don't really dry the clothes and she refused to believe it she, she was convinced I was pocketing the money and so one day she says I'll do the laundry apparently you can't do the laundry and you're not doing the laundry you're just keeping the change so I said okay go down there you don't believe me and then I was thinking she'll see what I'm talking about and then she comes back up she says I can't believe the dryers don't work what kind of a place is this the dryers don't work and I'm and I was sitting there saying um are you sure you put them in the dryer back to that say. but I thought it though I thought it and but I said to her um do you believe me now that I was telling the truth all along and she had to admit that she was wrong and I was right that the dryers didn't work or didn't work right and I'm like is there something you want to say to me and she apologized and I said I'm not the only person you have to say that to you have a friend who you told that I pocketed the quarters so I want you to get on the phone and tell your friend tell your best friend that I did not pocket the quarters and that I was telling the truth and you were wrong and I said I'm going to be right here to listen to you telling your best friend that you were wrong about me and sure enough she did and then uh, um, toward the end of our marriage and the end of our relationship basically I picked up my money at the bank um, I had to pay the rent, so uh, put the uh, check to the slot, and then when I got my money, I had to put it in the account so that the check wouldn't bounce. And so I go to the drive and uh, pick up the money, but I didn't count it, and that was my mistake. 
I should have counted it before I left the bank. But I didn't. Which is what a lot of us do. I mean, whether you go through the McDonald's drive through or whether you go through a bank drive through you assume, well, you assume you make an ass out of you and me, you know. That there isn't a problem. And and I leave and I leave and then after I leave I realize, wait a minute. I ordered this and I didn't get it. And then when that first happened, as soon as I got it, I parked the car and I would look through the bag to make sure that McDonald's or Burger King gave me what I ordered. And if it wasn't, I would go through the drive through again. Or maybe I would get out, you know, and walk up to the counter and said, I ordered this, this, and this, and I didn't get it. Same thing with the bank. I should have stopped and counted the money, but I didn't. So I go to my bank, and I'm ready to pause the account, and I realize that $400 was missing. And I was like, oh my God, what happened to $400? And I know I didn't go anywhere else. I know I didn't. And I said, oh, I got the truth on my side. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to tell her what happened. And there's that damn thing she could do about it. Because I know I didn't do anything wrong. And I had the truth on my side. So I walked in there proudly and I told her um, that $400 was missing. But what I did was I called my bank and they said, well, you got to call your bank. So I called the other bank and told them that I went through the drive through and $400 was missing. So they said, okay, well, we will look in the teller's drawer and we'll see what happened. So I went home, I told my ex-wife about what happened, and she says, I knew it, I knew it, you can't be trusted, you stole $400 and you're making up this crazy story that the bank shorted you $400. The bank will never short you $400. The bank couldn't short you $400. You pocket that money. And I'm going to, you know. And I said, I called the bank. They're going to call me back. And then she sits there crying and crying and crying. I can't believe you would do that, blah, blah, blah. You're a thief. You stole that money. And so I waited and I called my call first bank. And um, so I could still hear her crying in the living room. Well, I go to the den and call the bank. And, uh, and then um, when I called the bank, because the bank was supposed to call me. And the bank said, Mr. Lipton, I'm glad you called us back. We were about to call you. We, we checked the uh, uh, teller's drawer, and there is 400 extra dollars in her drawer. She forgot to give you that money. What do you want us to do, Mr. Lipton? Do you want to come back and pick up the $400, or do you want us to put this back in your account? I said, I'm going to come down there and pick the money up. You know. <clears throat> and they said, okay, we'll see you soon. So I marched out to the living room and I told my ex-wife, I said, I just called the bank and they told me that they charged me $400 and I'm going down there and pick it up. 
so I'll see you later. And she says, Matt, she stopped her crying, and she says, I want to come with you. I said, come on, come on, come on, get the car with me, I'll take you down to the bank, <coughs> I'll pick up the money. <coughs> and so she did, we did, we had to stop by the flower shop first, and I, she wanted to go to the flower shop next, or she wanted to go to the flower shop. I said, don't you want to come with me to the bank? She says, if you're insisting I go with you to the bank, then you must be telling the truth. So I believe you. I said, you sure? You sure about this? Because I want you to see this for yourself that the bank shorted me $400. She says, if you're insisting I go with you, that means you're telling me the truth. It's okay. You can go and come back. So, I've had people lie about me. People think the worst of me. You know, And it's happened to me all my life. All my life, even as a kid. And uh, it got, got to a point that somebody said to me, a very wise person said to me, people have the right to believe lies. And if a person wants to believe a lie, like my ex-wife, there's not a darn thing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. The only person you can control is yourself. Yourself. That's it. You cannot control somebody else. You can only control yourself. And if somebody wants to believe a lie, there's nothing you can do about it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And believe me, this is good water. Sorry that the horse don't want to drink it. It's pretty good water. So, um, so basically, so I had a video taken down. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Um, it's like waiting for that second shoe to drop, you know, because I've been seeing so many YouTubers losing their accounts, getting demonetized, you know, violating community standards. It's, it's, you know, it's the world that we live in. It's the cards we're dealt with. And you just have to play those cards and hope for the best. That's all you can do. So, uh, well, I can't say that I was asking for it. Maybe I was. I don't know. But, Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm uh, not going to talk about um, anything political anymore because, like my ex-wife, when it comes to YouTube, you got to walk on it around eggshells. But my my ex-wife, I had to walk around eggshells too. I had to be careful what I say. Because something that I say, because she was bipolar, you know what? I think the left is bipolar. That's what I think. Or I should say that the left behaves like someone who's bipolar. Because when a bipolar person who's bipolar 
does not take your medication, you do not know how they're going to react to something that you say. And that happened quite often. And that's what destroyed my marriage to her. Because she would get very violent. Because something I said would, here's the word now, trigger a violent response. So I always had to be on my walk around eggshells. Always be careful of what I say. So basically, my freedom of speech is curbed, is hindered by her bipolar disorder and her unpredictable reactions to things I say. So, snowflakes suffer from bipolar disorder, basically. And you just cannot control their behavior. They will become violent if you say something that might trigger them. But, there are people that trigger them. They don't have to say a thing because their identity, which is so stupid, you know, is what triggers them. You don't have to say a word. <coughs> And if you support President Trump, you are not, you are far right, like my friend said. But he's wrong. He's wrong. And lies, but I'll say one thing. And this is really my point of the last video that I did, which was taken down. So if any of you guys were fortunate enough to watch it before YouTube pulled it down, you know, that's good. That's good. Um, but I watched it. Good thing I didn't delete it off my phone to save space. Because I was watching it and seeing, okay, what did I say that was inciting to violence that was inappropriate that violated community standards and I think what I said was basically articulating what hateful people think about certain people so I think YouTube was taking literally what I was saying maybe a buzzword that triggered it without context without so they took it out of context <coughs> so it didn't matter how I said it what mattered was I said the words go figure right so the idiot was smarter than the smart person and if the word idiot is um, violence to really standards okay that would incite violence then they would take it down you know but as I said from now on, you will, not, you will not see any more of my, I will not be speaking about political issues anymore. Because um, I gotta tread carefully around all the eggshells that YouTube plays out. 
But anyway, the point I was trying to make was is that people hate and the hatred that people have are based on lies. I don't know why people believe such the most outrageous and most ridiculous and even some offensive lies. I mean, disgusting lies. And um, you, you can't do anything about it. And that's basically what I'm going to say. If someone wants to believe a lie, there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. But the sad and frustrating and sometimes even tragic consequences is that lies turns to hatred and hatred leads to violence. It's that simple. If we could stop the lies, we could stop the hatred, and we can stop the violence. It's that simple. Stop the lies, that will stop the hate, which will stop the violence. But how do we stop the lies? We can't force somebody not to tell a lie because everybody has free choice. And everybody has a right to think and believe the way that they do. It's sad, it's frustrating, and it's tragic. But it is true that people can believe a lie if they want to believe a lie. And the lies lead to hatred, and that would eventually lead to violence. That is the sequence of events here. Lies hatred, violence. Lies turn into hatred and hatred becomes violence. Or I should say the hatred, there's a greater chance that the hatred will produce violence. So we gotta stop the lies and that will stop the hatred. And that will stop the violence. And then our society can be harmonious if we respect each other and respect each other's viewpoint. You think abortion is murder, you don't think abortion is murder. I disagree with you, but I will fight your right to the death. Your right to believe what you believe. And we don't say that anymore. Respecting each other's opinions, respecting each other's positions. Okay. And if I tell you I believe in same sex marriage or same sex uh, relationships at the same time that I'm conservative and I. I um, support Donald Trump then I'm telling the truth there was no reason for me to lie why would I lie about that I, I believe there's nothing wrong with same sex marriage it's not for me a person could be bicurious or bisexual okay 
and be conservative. I think, you know, I remember some years ago that there was somebody who was ordained the first gay rabbi. Because in some Jewish communities, you know, homosexuality is abomination and so forth. And some exist to Christianity too. You know. And there's nothing wrong with a gay rabbi. Nothing. Nothing wrong with a gay rabbi. There was a time that a woman couldn't become a rabbi because in orthodox circles, women were not allowed to sit with their husbands during services. And the reason was, and that's the same reason why in conservative and orthodox congregations, women will never be rabbis because the rule is that the wor the worshiper should not be distracted during prayer. And that's why women were not part of it. They would sit on the sidelines. And then, of course, conservative Judaism says women can sit with their husbands during service and pray and be part of a big game. So you have the different branches of Judaism that allow certain things and believe certain things. So a woman could be a rabbi and a gay man can be a rabbi. Doesn't matter. Some it does matter. In other congregations it doesn't matter. So a conservative who supports Donald Trump can also support same sex relationships. And it is so frustrating that some people are told so strongly that if you support Trump, it is impossible to support same-sex relationships. Just like in some congregations, a woman cannot be a rabbi and a gay person can't be a rabbi. So it's along those same lines that a conservative cannot support same-sex marriage. Okay? If a woman can be a rabbi, if a gay man can be a rabbi, then a conservative can't support same-sex relationships. So, I stand in line with the gay rabbi and the woman rabbi. I'm right there. I'm right with, I stand shoulder to shoulder with my contemporaries. I stand shoulder to shoulder with the woman rabbi and the gay rabbi. And I would shake the gay rabbi's head. Nice to meet you, rabbi. I'm right there with you. I'm standing right there with you shoulder to shoulder, together, with a unified front to say there is nothing wrong with a gay rabbi, there is nothing wrong with a woman rabbi, and there is nothing wrong with a conservative supporter of Trump believing in same-sex relationships. I'm right there with you. I stand shoulder to shoulder with you guys. You can't tell me otherwise. You can't. Because it's a reality. I'm a conservative that supports same-sex relationships. I support Trump and same-sex relationships. And whatever these lies 
that is spewing about amongst the liberal community and the, and the Democrat community about conservatives, they're lies. They're, some of them are lies. What you're told is a lie. <coughs> but if we stop the lies, we can stop the hatred, we can stop the violence. All we got to do is stop the lies. Once we stop the lies, then everything else will fall into place beautifully. We could then be one American community. One American family. Undivided. 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 Stop with the identity politics. Stop with putting so much emphasis on white, male, uh, race, gender. It's all unimportant. It's irrelevant. And it's an elephant. It's a pink elephant. So every time you hear about identity politics, about sexual orientation, gender, and race. Think of a pink elephant because it's irrelevant. Like the pink elephant. So anyway, that's really all I want to say. And like I said, I've been warned by YouTube to um, uh, to to basically stop with the political videos, political blogs, and I'll do that. Unfortunately what we're living with and um, you know I think of the Twilight Zone episode Brain Center Whipples when Mr. Whipple created or was obsessed about efficiency and kept replacing people with machines and it became too much of a good thing. And eventually, he himself was replaced by a robot. So, he, he made his bed and now he's lying in. So, <sighs> but now, before I go, I want to say one more thing. Nothing is inherently evil in itself. Like, okay, now look what we did to ourselves. Now we created um, platforms, social platforms, and now the platforms have now turned on us. But, you know, <coughs> it's the people. It's the people who run these social platforms and um, everything we create can be used, abused, and I knew there was another one because I said this a few times, not on the videos, but everything can be used, misused, and abused. That was it. Three things. Three things that we create, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, whether it's a telephone, whether it's a car, whatever it is, okay, whatever we create, 
it can be used, it can be misused, and it can be abused. Used, misused, and abused. And so that's what we got here. We created Google. We, as human beings, Americans, we created Google. We created YouTube. And it can be used, misused, and abused. And it depends upon the people who are part of it. Used, misused, and abused. Okay, well that's mainly what I wanted to talk about. So, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And, um, hey, it is what it is. That's what we got. These are the cards we're dealt. And we're just going to have to play them and hope for the best. And I have this approach with everything else. That you, you may be dealt a bad, a bad hand of cards. Play them and hope for the best. So, I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye.